Done. Okay. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are starting today very early, uh, and uh, in London it's just 7:15 a.m. And this is the first set of the sessions of Horasis. And uh, we are happy that we have this opportunity uh, to give some light and uh, to the Greater Caspian region. Uh, I will just uh, give you a few uh, few information about uh, the region and the Greater Caspian region, the surrounding Caspian Sea, Black Sea, also including Central to Afghanistan and, no and Northern Pakistan. Uh, this region is important uh, for the world because this is one of the future points of growth. Uh, there is a huge potential on the energy resources and uh, potential for the mining industry. But besides that, uh, there are 500 million people living. Uh, there are 10 million square kilometers and a $3 trillion GDP for today, uh, which we are hoping will be double and tripled in a very short time. Uh, today's uh, session dedicated to the investment opportunities in the region and uh, how to unlock uh, these opportunities, hack foreign investors, how to build a uh, joint venture with the local business community. Uh, we will have people uh, who had uh, a really extensive experience in the region. And uh, between our speakers today is Nusret Kumer. Uh, he's the chairman of the Damnus Energy and Investment from Turkey. Uh, he had uh, decades of experience in the region and the energy sector. When I will, uh, before uh, giving him the floor, I will uh, introduce him a little bit more. Uh, we have Andreas Schweitzer, uh, who is the managing director of uh, Arjan Capital from United Kingdom. He's originally from Switzerland, where I'm now. And uh, even we have some common friends, apparently. Uh, for me, it is uh, very important uh, to listen to his opinion how to do business on the ground. I will explain you later why. Uh, and we have Holger Wagner. Uh, he's the founder and partners from United Arab Emirates. Uh, he spent money developing retail business in the region, in the countries like Azerbaijan, Russia, Kazakhstan, and Georgia. Uh, and uh, it will be also very interesting for us uh, to understand how retail business is going and how to be the most important. And I am Murat Setnipesov, uh, chairman of the organizing committee of the Caspian Week Forum, uh, which we are doing annually in Davos, except year 2021 because of the COVID restrictions, but hope to restart uh, this initiative again. Right now we switched mainly to the virtual side, and we are doing a series of webinars dedicated for the Greater Caspian region, but we'll be happy to see uh, everybody live on one of our uh, events. And uh, we are very grateful to Dr. Frank Richter, Chairman of Horasis, giving us the opportunity to talk about the Greater Caspian region. Now, let's go uh, to our speakers in more details. I would like first to introduce Nusret Kumert. And uh, Nusret is in the Energy B84. Uh, and uh, he uh, led uh, the he led that time Royal Dutch Shell development uh, business in the Caspian Sea. Uh, he was at the beginning of the Trans-Caspian uh, gas pipeline, which up to now didn't materialize, but we hope that in a few years we will, we will get it. Uh, because this will connect east and west coasts of the Caspian Sea for the export and transit of the natural gas, which is extremely important uh, for all countries, John. Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, Turkey, and also potential source in Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Uh, he was also in the exploration business, also Royal Dutch Shell, on the Black Sea and the Southeast Turkey. And uh, because of Caspian region is a very rich in the energy resources and uh, Nusret almost four decades in this business and developing uh, uh, this. Uh, it will be very interesting uh, to listen to his uh, on the things, what, what is happening now, the current status uh, of the energy projects in the, Casp in the Caspian Sea and the Greater Caspian region, what's happened before. Uh, what were the recent developments and uh, what could be done in the future, in the nearest future, in the short-term, mid-term and long-term perspectives. 
and also very important uh, his view on the development of the renewable energy in the region. Uh, Nusret, floor is yours, please. Thank you very much, Murat. Thank you for the uh, kind uh, introduction. Uh, indeed, I'm, I'm, uh, first of all, thank you very much for including me in this uh, very important uh, panel uh, and, and uh, allow me to share my, uh, my thoughts and opinions. Indeed, the uh, greater Caspian region, uh, I think, if not uh, the most, uh, one of the most uh, important and interesting uh, regions in the world. So, uh, it, and then needs to say, so hydrocarbons, oil and gas, uh, minerals, uh, and, 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 and the geopolitical issues. So, since the collapse of the Union, uh, within the uh, support of, uh, and later on, EU, uh, uh, for, for many reasons, for security of supplies, for, for, for Europe, for independence, uh, economic and political independence of the countries, uh, and, and, and some other reasons, they have been supported uh, for the development. However, the progress has been uh, slower than it should have been, again, for, 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 for certain geopolitical reasons. So. It is important for security of supply. It is important for uh, oil and gas, but mostly gas. Uh, oil, as, you, as, we, as we are aware, you, uh, uh, you explore it, uh, you find it, you take it to the nearest post, and it's all, almost done. But uh, in, in gas, when you find it, you have a trouble. Uh, it, it's a trouble for the resource country. It's a trouble for uh, also consuming country as well, because everybody needs it, and the, and the progress has been slow. So as you have highlighted that East-West Corridor has been uh, uh, almost the most important energy topic in the world for decades. However, the progress has been slow. So uh, that means there's a great potential over there uh, that East-West from Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan was, uh, has been actually the most important one because the fourth largest gas resources in Caspian region. Uh, it ended up with... Um, uh, instead of uh, uh, east-west, it happened to be west currently. But more resources and more potential uh, When it comes to uh, Azerbaijan, uh, from an oil country, it became a, a gas country. And unexpectedly, with the discoveries of Shaktinis 1 and Shaktinis 2, and the developments, it became uh, a, a, an actor in, uh, in, in the region. So when we say uh, Greater Caspian region, actually uh, the, the developments on Afghanistan and Iran has been, uh, will, will, be, will be quite important. When we said Afghanistan, the latest development with Biden administration, uh, the withdrawal of the troops, which will, in my opinion will be slower than, uh, than announced. And the other one is sanction, lifting sanction, sanctions or easing uh, sanctions uh, for, for Iran uh, with the uh, Democrat administration. So we shall see uh, the progress from Obama to Trump and Trump to, uh, to Biden, how the transition uh, will go through. So the East West uh, corridor, um, well, the Caspian region has always been a uh, top topic for oil and gas. And which is true. Uh, that has been with state capitalism. As, as, as we are, well, uh, Murat, with recall, in last year's uh, Davos, uh, we, uh, we participated and we spoken. Uh, the topic, uh, the key take was uh, stakeholder capitalism, because uh, we know that it started with, uh, stake, uh, with shared capitalism, which uh, moved to state capitalism. And uh, last year, uh, that was promoted stakeholder capitalism where all the stakeholders uh, would be uh, putting eyes on uh, energy projects and all other projects. Actually, though, the purpose, because uh, the framework for reporting uh, for uh, sustainable development measures uh, the first time was put through uh, and the, the three largest uh, accounting companies um, were given the task to set the parameters uh, for, the, for that particular one. 
and 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 with the zero emission targets, uh, Caspian um, play, let me say, will also have uh, transition. Uh, well, uh, the gas, uh, the gas will will not be uh, the gas projects will not be losing importance because gas is the transition uh, fuel for the future uh, in the interim period. Uh, but but renewable is getting uh, more and more importance, getting more and more and more, and more uh, plays with the zero emission uh, targets. So that means and, and Caspian region and Greater Caspian region, uh, interesting. They're not not oil and gas, but it has vast renewable uh, resources also, and in all all all, all means, uh, wind, solar, uh, and hydro, power. So in the in the new era, uh, I'm, I don't imply that uh, the uh, hydrocarbon projects or, or or oil and gas will lose importance, and the region will lose its importance in those areas. But I think it will uh, increase it is, it is its importance with uh, development of renewables. So the topic is unlocking investment opportunities. I think I would like to uh, mention to. Um, uh, to private sector uh, to 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 uh, to put uh, an important uh, uh, position for Caspian uh, in their investment agenda in renewable energy. We know that big companies, big oil oil and gas companies, are also in the transition from uh, oil and gas uh, companies to being oil and gas companies to renewable companies as well. So in the in the next decades, I will see. In my opinion, we will see, in my opinion, uh, more activities in renewable energy. Thank you, Murat. Thank you, Nusret. Uh, yes, it, uh, what you told is very important, uh, because uh, with the climate change problems, uh, the world is going uh, to the zero emission strategy, and uh, for that, to, uh, to achieve the strategy, uh, probably natural gas is uh, the best uh, transition fuel because uh, it's uh, twice less emissive than the traditional oil. I am not talking about the coal, uh, but important here uh, that uh, some countries, they're promoting uh, electricity like uh, electric cars and so on in their countries, let's take uh, India, for example, and China, meanwhile producing electricity from burning coal. Uh, and uh, which is uh, not very logical. In that case, uh, first, uh, it, it will be needed to replace the coal with the less emissive fossil fuel, even let it be oil, and then let it be natural gas, which is, uh, I think, uh, the best uh, fossil fuel which you could have now. And then the next stage will be massively going to the uh, electric, electric energy, electric cars, and so on. And uh, uh, thank you, Nusret, for very valuable information and comments. I have one additional question to you. Uh, what you can say about the recent developments in the cooperation between Turkey and the Caspian region, particularly Azerbaijan and the Central Asia? Because we see uh, now the foreign policy of Turkey became very, very uh, active. Uh, thank you, Murat. Uh, indeed, indeed, Turkey's uh, foreign policy uh, during the next, let's say, uh, one or two decades, uh, was set on um, placing Turkey as an important player, a key player in the region, not only in uh, Caspian region, but also in the Middle East. But that policy had a lot of challenges uh, and some consequences also. Uh, Turkey, Turkey is a natural part of uh, Greater Caspian leader uh, in the country. When I say leader, actually it's a big family, but let me say maybe an elder family, as some uh, some might think, uh, to put the family together. Uh, in Azerbaijan, there were ups and downs, but the recent development in um, uh, the security developments in the region with regards to Armenia uh, was uh, had put uh, the forces together and ties together uh, in in Azerbaijan, so it strengthened. Uh, the, uh, uh, the the links with uh, with Azerbaijan. Uh, likewise, likewise, uh, the uh, now uh, the I think uh, Afghanistan withdrawal of the U.S. troops on 14th of uh, this month 
President Erdogan and uh, President Biden will have a meeting. Uh, and that uh, the one, one of the topic will be Turkey's role in Afghanistan. So that will be uh, also a, a, a very, very, uh, and in, in spite of challenges uh, between uh, Turkey's policies and U.S. policies, it is interesting uh, that with a lot of a lot of uh, varying opi uh, opinions between two administrations, between two countries or two administrations, that will be on the top top of the agenda. So looks like Turkey's uh, involvement in Afghanistan, uh, like its involvement in Syria, uh, will come into the into the picture and the developments we will see. So I will I will see more and more uh, more and more cooperation uh, between Turkey and the other countries in the region uh, in the in, in the in the era. Um, uh, both in security and energy matters. So this is, this is my opinion uh, for that cooperation, Murat. Thank you. And also, what I would like Thank to you, add... Nusret. Thank uh, you, Nusret. Now Martin. I would like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Mr. Ah, th thank you. Looks like we had some small problems with. Uh, with... Yeah, I think we have some problem with the connection. But uh, yes, just one second. Uh, Andres, can you hear me? Yes. It is a bit of background noise uh, here okay. and there, so Good. that's why I put uh, it on mute. I think if uh, you are thank not you, Nusret. For, for... Thank you. Ah, okay, perfect. Uh, Nusret, thank you very much uh, for your comments and uh, for uh, your opinion, uh, and uh, which is very important. We will probably come back. We will have time uh, uh, to, to these uh, questions later. But now I would like to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Andreas Schweitzer. Uh, he is originally from Switzerland, but living in the uh, United Kingdom. Uh, he is uh, uh, managing a company Arjan Capital uh, in London. Uh, but very important that uh, he managed to build successful business in uh, two very difficult countries of the Greater Caspian region: is uh, Iran and Afghanistan. And uh, I would uh, I would like to give a floor to him to explain uh, for the Western businessmen how to do successful business in such uh, Please, Andreas. Well, thank you very much and uh, good morning, an early good morning from London. Uh, yes, a Swiss passport helps. This is certainly something uh, which is true. Many passport help uh, from Europe if you deal these countries because Afghanistan and Iran are probably two of the most uh, geopolitically most complicated passports to have these days, unfortunately. And uh, especially for Iran, travel is very difficult. <clears throat> we are uh, a trade and advisory company for these countries. We are invested in these markets and in markets in the area. And uh, we believe that Afghanistan and Iran, like all of the stars, offer an underrated opportunity. Why underrated? Because it's probably far away and you need to be very knowledgeable in what you're doing, different law, different language. So these are countries for companies who have a significant business. And we see this in Afghanistan, for example, where uh, today, if you are a CEO, you're probably very careful if you send anybody to Afghanistan because it is still uh, quite unstable. A lot of accidents happen. And if something happens to a team player, you would uh, be a very unhappy company leader. So. It has been more an issue of um, being involved that we have uh, 
person who runs the Afghanistan desk and we assist companies to in their tenders with Afghanistan. And you need to do this from the ground and uh, we represent certain companies there. <clears throat> uh, Afghanistan is a market of 30 million people. A lot of the large companies, we all know the names from Europe and industry and services are there, but uh, many find it difficult. The, the big issue also in these countries, and that applies also to countries like Turkmenistan and similar, is payment. Why is payment a problem? There are no sanctions, as to my knowledge, with Afghanistan. None whatsoever. The dollar is a particular issue. Dollar clearing is difficult because uh, a lot of dollars have been invested and the Americans probably have a very uh, great interest to monitor their currency. But if you are, let's not discuss that. Let's just think of a normal transaction with francs, pounds or euros. Why is it difficult? In our experience, simply the country doesn't have a rating most, if none of the bank has a rating, so your letter of credit business is difficult. And also in today's world of regulation and compliance and the costs involved with this, the, the payments that were refused in one case for us, very small payments, few hundred pounds, uh, the answer of the CEO of that institution was, is simply not worth maintaining uh, compliance with a country like Afghanistan for five transfers a year. The cost of compliance is high, so you need to have the business. So Afghanistan has also the disadvantage that it is in a way treated as a marginal country business-wise for many, and so it's a bit of a vicious circle. We believe that uh, uh, being there, having crypto solutions, investing your own money and there are uh, some few and small Afghanistan funds are solutions. And when I mention Afghanistan here, it uh, certainly applies to other stands. To uh, Turkmenistan is a particular case in the similar way. We can come back to questions uh, and answers if you wish afterwards, of course. Let, we, let me move a little bit to the West, back to Iran. <clears throat> Iran have been, we are involved in Iran since 2009. It, uh, we are Swiss Iranian family and um, therefore Iran is for part of the family and in the meantime over the many years for me too, uh, second home. So we go there often and we go there without problem. Get an annual visa, it's no issue. Uh, dealing with enough in, in Iran in 2009 under the presidency of Ahmadinejad has been very difficult. You had EU sanction, you had UN sanction, you had US sanction. The world didn't want to know, the world didn't want to deal with. We developed renewable energy for uh, particular reasons there. And uh, we looked at the make or buy. What can you do in a country like that? Because Iran is a eternal startup, 80 million people, as many as Germany, an economy uh, not as large, but close uh, to the size of Turkey, if you ignore the, the foreign exchange rate, and a country of ambitious people. The Shah, uh, the former Shah once said that Af Iran is a European country which just moved much to the east. I found this an interesting comment because if I look at Iran, I would compare it. I was born as a Swiss, but born and raised in Germany. East Germany comes to your mind uh, while the ball was still up. So many uh, synergies. We then left and we came back in 2015. There was a lot of M&A. A lot of companies came and again, payments are issues. And uh, we are FCA regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. So we in, we have own legal service, we have own risk management in-house. My colleagues from Search and Capital run asset management. So we are particularly careful, but we see the opportunities, and especially now in Iran again, 
under hopefully a JCPOA 2.0 altered or enhanced version a as a market with 500 million of people around the area. So that's as much as the EU. So if you run a US a EU business, European business, I would give it a lot of consideration. Uh, we can go into many details of these countries, but I don't want to take more airtime, except Murat, uh, if there are questions, happy to share. Or if you want to have me commenting on certain points, by all means. Uh, just, uh, Andres, just one additional question. You mentioned the cryptocurrency solu crypto solutions in Afghanistan. Uh, this uh, it's just like a payment mechanism, or you want to do like tokenization of some assets in Afghanistan? Uh, what is the idea behind? It is how long is a piece of string? Once since we and since we looked into the crypto, and we are completely novice in that. We started out with payment solution in Europe because clients came to us. I, maybe I should say as well that we started a, a, a fund initiative to a trade finance fund initiative to finance short-term trade if it's credit insured normally uh, the certain the recent situation with Greensill of course did a lot of damage to the to the trade finance market but uh, trade finance still exists you have still a two trillion trade gap which needs solutions and it needs solutions which are efficient. So some of our clients pay us in crypto and therefore we have to pay them in crypto. So we as a company have to sign up to crypto exchanges and we do this. We like Switzerland, for example, and we like a couple of other uh, very good exchanges uh, to do so. But, uh, to us, it is purely a mechanism uh, to, help, to help someone to have a way if they have the money and don't need a letter of credit to do this. We have not been involved yet in crypto letter of credits, but I'm sure this is where the blockchain thing is going. And we're not talking here about Bitcoin if we talk about crypto. We're talking about a technology, a system <clears throat> to deal with. The tokenization um, is something which is early stage, but would be a uh, it's, to me, it's a great crowdfunding opportunity. And if you have a solar farm, to come back to uh, Newsred's comment on renewables, solar or wind, we like hydrogen, for example, hydrogen storage also. There are ways to energy opportunities in all the region. Uh, it doesn't really matter which country you mention, but it doesn't matter in Central Asia and it doesn't matter in Europe. Waste energy is one of our fundamental issues in particular we have too much waste and we use too much energy. So this is a tokenization could be a solution. But okay. it's it's not for tomorrow morning. The, le yes. the legal framework, the regulatory framework, of course, if you're a private investor, a group of private investors, you can do it. But to market this to an, a group of investors, we're not quite there yet, I would say. Okay, and keep an eye on it. Uh, thank you very much for the interesting comments. And uh, with regards to the crypto solutions, and uh, like three, four years ago, uh, we were hoping that by today uh, you can really process payments and cryptocurrencies without any problem and everything will be properly regulated and so on. But uh, three years after, I could just tell that we are still somewhere in the crypto winter and we are waiting for the crypto spring. That uh, the new interest, the crypto solutions will come from the business, uh, from the community and so on. But uh, let's see, maybe for such countries uh, where the payment, traditional payment or they called fiat payment are not so much welcome, like uh, we discussed Afghanistan or Iran, maybe uh, properly regulated crypto solutions will be the really escape from the situation. And well, just I, so if I can say something, I don't think I would say we are in the crypto spring. We are not in no. the crypto summer. 
We are definitely no, no, no. out of the winter, but the, you see, the, a crypto. I want to. I want to. So, sorry to correct this. This is not to find a fiat alternative because people don't uh, have no way to deal with money. Afghanistan deals with money, and even in cash every day, the Afghanis are probably one of the largest, the and most professional traders. They know this since since centuries. Iranians and other stands also, but crypto is just a very intelligent additional solution. This is how I would label it, who helps around these issues. Now, many people come with AML, with any money laundering, and say, oh, this is only for for darknet and uh, all the awful things you read about crypto. Uh, I don't share this opinion because, as we know, on blockchain, everything is extremely documented. Mm -hmm. So I would even say a crypto transaction is much more documented than many others. So it's an issue of understanding and confidence, and you have a lot of losses in in um, exchanges. So there is a, a security problem we still have in the crypto space that you use yours. That there are hard wallets, there are other solutions. But uh, sorry to add it another thirty seconds in favor of crypto. <laughs> No, th thank you, uh, Justin. Uh, no, it, it was really interesting. Uh, okay, uh, now I would like uh, to introduce again Holger Wagner, who is the founder of the Wagner and Partners from United Arab Emirates. And uh, he had a really great experience in the Greater Caspian region, uh, developing a retail business in the region, and uh, spent uh, six years of his life in Azerbaijan, developing the chain of supermarkets in Azerbaijan. Uh, and also, uh, uh, he developed business, uh, retail business in Russia, in Georgia. And uh, I would like uh, to ask him to share his opinion, his views, uh, how to do uh, massive uh, business uh, for the foreign investors uh, or foreign businessmen in the Greater Caspian region, how to attract uh, uh, business partners, how to arrange like uh, some kind of a joint venture cooperations between the Western foreign businessmen and the local businessmen, business community, and how to attract in investments uh, for such projects in the region. Please. So, good morning and thank you, Mr. Murat, for introducing me and being part of this well-known panel. Uh, Personally, I'm very optimistic about the Greater Caspian region, exactly as it was explained from the other panelists in this meeting today. What we are focusing on is what Mr. Nusref said in the beginning, is the stakeholder capitalism. And this step means what? It means that you are generating income in the moment as countries from, as we discussed earlier, coal, oil, gas, and minerals. And now the next step will be renewables. <clears throat> but this income has to go through into the overall society. And how do you organize that? Because to have a stability in an economy and in a society, you have to improve their overall income purchasing power and standard of living. Now, to do that, the money has to go from these companies which are generating and selling the coal, oil, gas, and minerals to the overall society. And that can go, in my point of view, first through foreign direct investment if the country uh, leadership is willing to open this foreign direct investment for these areas. So, and that goes into the first step, as you all know, through joint ventures, because you cannot work in these countries without having a local partner, because then everything is stopped. So you need a joint venture agreement first. And if you have a joint venture agreement, the next step could be that you are going to IPOs. And if you go then to IPOs, then you are generating the openness for other investors coming into your country and going forward. Now, what would be in retail an example how that can work? And we just heard the example of Iran. 
We just heard the example also earlier from other countries, Kazakhstan or Uzbekistan. I lived in six years now in our country, Azerbaijan. And what you see is in all these countries, there is a retail organization called SPA International. SPA International is in, started a year ago in Iran. SPA International is in Azerbaijan. SPA International is going into that. That is an organization where independent local retailers joining forces and getting the knowledge about and can start the joint venture. And after that you have started the joint venture, then you can go in the later stage to IPO if the owners want to do that. Now, these oh, alternatives, I think, is exactly what the stakeholder capitalism needs because this is you have to generate purchasing power for the society so that the income of the societies goes up so that you get the geopolitical uh, stability what you need in these countries it's not only generating money and then putting it somewhere in the world you have to take generating the money and put it into your country so that the lifestyle can go up and then you can go forward. One example is many of these countries have forgotten that they are agriculture countries. And what they are doing is they, they went into these uh, oil and gas and mineral business, they went into the construction business, but they have forgotten the original sources where they come from. And now the last years as the oil price was down, the gas price was down, countries realize that they have to go back to the roots and organizing that. So I'm making a statement here. I know that three of you are in the oil and gas and mineral business, and <laughs> I'm making the statement and say, okay, take the money and uh, use it in the country, generate employment in this area, and one of these options would be the retail business And I think there is a tremendous opportunity because in all these countries, excluding Turkey, in all the other countries, the um, market is very fragmented and therefore a big opportunity to grow forward. Thank you, Holger. Uh, now I would like to ask uh, the same question for all speakers, for all panelists, and uh, just uh, for everybody, just one minute to reply just in a few words because we don't have too much time. And the questions are, uh, which investment opportunities you can see in the Greater Caspian region, first, and second, how to attract foreign investors for these projects? And partially, you already highlighted that, but just in the very summarized uh, manner, uh, just give you ideas. Uh, please, let's start from uh, Nusret. Uh, thank you, Murat. Well, actually, in my opinion, it is still oil and gas and, 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 and petrochemicals. Uh, with road and belt, development i think that is that that needs to be taken into consideration transportation and logistics uh, it is coming up uh, and renewables so what needs to be uh, what needs to be done uh, this is this is to, to, to improve the investment climate uh, to uh, the transparency hmm? um, legislation secondary legislation Uh, and 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 a clarity clarity on the uh, on the uh, outlook i think that would be that would be my uh, um, uh, suggestions thank you andreas your ideas in addition to renewables we like technology platforms fmcg retail like holgo mentions there is um, a broad opportunity Real estate could often be a good hedge against inflation. The way to, uh, and here particularly around, the way to attract investors is to wrap, the experience is to wrap the investment within a recognized jurisdiction. For example, mm -hmm. you do a EU regulated fund, you do a, a stock market listing, on a smaller exchange in Europe. For a fund manager, it's, best, it's easier to invest into a, a, a German listed or unlisted company who owns an asset in Azerbaijan 
in any of these countries than going directly into an area they don't know. So it's the way to market it properly. Thank you. Holger, your ideas, please. Yeah, find the local family you trust, build with them a joint venture, and then exactly as Andrea just said, is go for IPO. And I think this is the right way to go. Thank you. Uh, very interesting practical uh, comments and ideas. I would just like to comment about the investment climate, like uh, Nusret already mentioned. And uh, there are several good examples. Uh, everybody see now, could see now uh, Uzbekistan, uh, because during the little more than four years, the country completely changed. They started to open, uh, they canceled visas for almost 100 countries. And uh, now uh, they're really going forward with the economic reforms and attracting foreign investors. Uh, and the second good example is, is Azerbaijan, uh, where they created special service, uh, one uh, window uh, concept called Asan service, where you can do a registration of uh, everything related to the business just in hours time, not weeks like before. Uh, and uh, also they created several industri free industrial zones where you can process and uh, do uh, industrial uh, production of uh, things with a very moderate or sometimes without taxes, with the tax exemptions. And also interesting example is the AFC, Astana International Financial Center in Kazakhstan, uh, which introduced also English law and uh, English arbitration into the legal system. And there uh, you investors could be safe uh, they are working as per English law, which is an internationally recognized legal system. And uh, we have uh, still three minutes. That's why uh, I will just uh, would like uh, to thank all our panelists uh, for this exciting discussion, for the interesting ideas which they raised, and uh, we were able to listen with a unique experience in the region. Also, a big thanks uh, again to the for us as chairman, Frank, Dr. Frank Richter, for organizing this session. And uh, I wish you all the best for Horace's initiative. And from my side, would like to add that uh, whenever situation will allow, we'll be happy uh, to see you on our real live event, uh, which will be most probably Caspian Week. Not sure it will be in Davos or other place in the world, uh, but we will try to do it again and restart again. And uh, meanwhile, uh, happy to see you on our virtual sessions, which will be dedicated to the Greater Caspian region. Uh, on that point, uh, unless you have uh, some very short comments for 30 seconds, uh... please, Andreas. Yeah, the, 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 as many have no understanding beyond what's written in the newspaper, which is often political, which is often uh, rarely really good news you know normally you have more bad news in a newspaper than good news to report just go there if you to join Holger here find a local family but also just go there personally for Iran we had many years many people coming except the last two three years and that just gives an understanding it shows that there are people who are rather smart who are uh, educate who run businesses like uh, we think these businesses should be run. They run it in their own way, but uh, just go there. Tourism is an industry these countries uh, should support. Yes. Business, business tourism and health is also an issue, for example, you see in some of the countries there. Thank you. Now we're out of time and uh, the 45 minutes we did. And thank you very much again and see you next time uh, on Horace's event, hopefully, uh, to discuss the Greater Caspian region. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you.